video is a collaboration with programming knowledge. In this video, we'll talk about how we can implement the put and the delete request for our Spring Boot REST API application. And we'll see how we create the controller and also the service for this. And we'll run it on Postman and see uh, what the output is. So uh, just to give you a brief recap of what we have done in the previous video. So we are making a to-do list REST API Spring Boot application where we have a to-do list API, which we are going to create, which is going to have things like creating a task, updating a task and deleting a task. So the CRUD operations that can be performed in a simple REST API, uh, but using Spring Boot. So uh, in the initial videos, we made our to-do entity where we had a simple to-do class and we had uh, the attributes or the variables for the class, which is ID, name, summary, description. We had generated the getters and setters and also uh, the parameterized and non-parameterized constructors. After that, we talked about how we can do a dependency injection into our uh, Spring Boot application, the controller, uh, where the to-do service is a singleton and how it you know, works behind the scenes and all of that. And then we implemented a few requests. So we implemented three API endpoints, which is slash to-dos, which is get all to-dos. And the other one is getting a single particular to-do based on the unique ID. And the last one is create to-do. And we also talked about how we just have an in-memory uh, data right now. So we don't have a database yet, but uh, the video after this will be starting our database journey. So we'll actually connect a database to our REST APIs and then we'll be actually uh, dealing with that. So in the upcoming videos, we'll also talk about how we can actually deploy our application uh, on the cloud so that everyone and anyone can access it and use the API. So that is for a later video, but for this video, uh, let's start uh, implementing our put and our delete requests. So let's start with put first. So let's make our uh, simple endpoint controller for this. So we just have a request mapping and the method is gonna be equal to request method dot put. So pretty straightforward, nothing different here. And the value is going to be equal to slash to do slash ID. So uh, only when we have the particular ID of our task, only then we can uh, change it. So that is it. Next, uh, what we have to do is make the method or code of the method. So we'll be having update to do. And now this will be having a path variable. So let's write that. Uh, nothing uh, extra here, just simple stuff which we have already done before. The path variable is going to be uh, the ID. Uh, so the integer ID. Oh, sorry, my bad. And we'll also be having a request body where we have the updated uh, things which you want to update inside our to do, right? So request body. And that's going to be a to do object called as true. Great. Awesome. So now we have our uh, method ready and all you have to do uh, is just like post, we just have a to do call to the true service dot update to do and pass in our object. Now obviously this hasn't been made yet. Uh, the function update to do hasn't been made yet. So we'll have to code that up. But this is how the controller looks like. So pretty simple, pretty straightforward, nothing complicated here, exactly like post, but we have an ID and we have a request body. So let's implement update to do now. So create method. And this is our auto generated stuff to fill in. So let's fill this up now. So how do we actually update our uh, task, uh, update our to do object here in this array list, right? So what we can do is instead of uh, doing a filter and uh, lambda functions, all of that, uh, we'll just do a simple for loop where we loop through each and every to-do list object and then we check if we have the one by ID. So we check by ID. So if the to-do dot ID is equal to the ID inside the list, then we uh, update or then we set the object uh, at that place or we replace it. So. Uh, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. If you know Java, that should be more than enough. But let's actually, you know, implement it now. So for int i equal to zero, 
i is less than to do dot size i plus plus and now my real looping inside uh let's get the to do so to do dot get i the index and now let's check whether the id matches so if t dot get id dot equals to do dot get id so if the id matches uh, then we have to update our function so let's see how that works now so uh, yeah so i just i completely forgot about this dj id and i think the integer comes before to do so let me just change that uh, let me just fix this great so let me see the to do controller so the controller has two right so, um, my right sorry so we have the id comma to do great so now instead of doing a to do dot get id we just do an id so i know it's much easier to work with uh, yeah now let's uh, replace our existing to do uh, let's say two with the new one new object which we have so all you have to do is do a to do dot set the index is i and the element is to do and now that we're done we return once that happens so uh, we're not uh, handling a lot of uh, exceptions and issues here uh, for any of the REST APIs. We'll be doing that in the subsequent videos where we actually handle the cases where you know uh, we are not able to find a to do. So we uh, throw a status 404 and also give a user friendly message. So we'll be doing all of that in the upcoming videos. But uh, in the initial videos, let's talk about the basics that we need to understand about how MVP architecture in Spring works and also how simple api endpoints can be made without you know uh, dwelling much into it so this is how the update works so update to do loop through all of them uh, get each object compare the id and then replace it with the new updated uh, to do object if you find a match and then return and that's it that's it for update and now let's start implementing a delete so one delete is pretty pretty straightforward pretty simple so we don't have to worry much about it uh, we'll just do it uh, very quickly in like a few minutes and then we can uh, run the application and see our final you know uh, a very simple hello world of crud uh, right now so again uh, let me just copy paste a lot of it here now let me not have to write so much again so we copy this again and we just need to make a few changes so this is going to be delete yep and we don't need a request body because uh, we just get the id and we delete it automatically and this has to be deleted yep yep that's it let me just check with cost mapping uh, delete and get it by id and then we just remove the id great so let's create the method and service now and we got this tab so again, the delete logic is pretty simple uh, and straightforward, just like the update and the rest of them. Uh, we just have to loop through every single one again, and then uh, delete the one which we uh, get a match by the ID. So uh, now that we have already done a for loop, let's do a Lambda function again, because uh, it's much more intuitive to do it with the Lambda function here, uh, and you'll see why. So all you have to do is return. So okay, we don't have to return also, we have a white. So we do what to do is start remove if and we have a lambda function now so for every uh, to do object uh, remove it if uh, t dot get id dot equals the id and that's that's it so since id is unique it will remove the ones which have the same id so again if there's only one id of one then one is removed so that's it that's pretty much it we just remove it if the id is equal so uh, as i said uh, we are not doing a lot of uh, we are handling a lot of issues and exceptions here because uh, this is a very basic implementation and we'll talk about or worry about uh, them in a later video so just to see what's happening here 
uh, we are assuming that the to do un uh, the to do id is unique so we have to add that unique constraint here and the annotations but we'll do that later but the to do id is later then we remove it if there is a match and that's pretty much it and how delete works so let's run the application now and see if uh, our implementation is right so let me just run run it before we actually you know use postman so run as java application and should happen about now yep Our laptop is really really slow i need to update it but yeah let's see what we can do about that great so i think it is started on port 8080 so we have our so let's get it first so let me uh, increase the size of this uh, yeah so let's get all the to-dos first So we have one, two, and three. Uh, task one, task two, task three. And now let's do a put on one. So let's do it on one now. We we'll do a put body. Uh, it's going to be for four. Okay. So we already have four here. So you know, I'll just be lazy and do it for four. So summary four updated and description also updated. The header is going to be application content type JSON. Nothing different there and we need an id so the id is sorry four so we are updating four and we just update the summary and description and now let's press send so we don't get anything here but if we do a get on everything now uh, as you can see that oh sorry we didn't even have four oh my bad yep that was uh, that was bad uh, let's do a put again and let's do it for three this time Completely, oh sorry, I completely forgot that we do not have four. Wow, three, um, three, and yep, three. Great. So we're not missing anything now. Let's do a send and get all of them. Send, and as you can see, we have updated a third one. And now let's while we're at it, let's delete three because you know did not help us in any way anyway <laughs> yeah so we have delete and to do slash three uh, press send again we don't get a, a body back but when you do a get again you should see that three has been deleted so yeah as you can see we just have one and two so this is how you actually uh, implement a simple hello world uh, crud application crud application uh, using spring boot and now in the upcoming videos we'll be doing a bunch of interesting stuff uh, which is going to be added to our uh, app uh, the next thing is going to be connecting our application with a database and after that we'll be adding a few constraints out of that uh, using annotations uh, in our application and at the end we'll be deploying our application on the cloud and uh, let's see how we do that in the later video as well so uh, that was it for today um, thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one